Hi, welcome to Real Times. This is our vlog where we talk about industry trends, new products, and everything coax. My name is Carrie Obazinski. I am the distribution sales manager here at Times Microwave Systems, part of Amphenol. And today we have Julianne Benson with us, one of our product managers. She is in charge of our SIO2 line and semi-rigid products. And she's here in Connecticut all the way from Mesa where our uh, production and manufacturing is of those products. Uh, so Julianne, thanks for joining me. Yes, of course. <laughs> and I thought we'd start with what's SIO2? Uh-huh. Yeah, of course. Um, so SiO2, so it's silicon dioxide. So it's one of our specialty product lines. So very harsh environments are kind of what drive people to use SiO2. So we'll kind of go through construction first of the uh, cable and then uh, go from there. So ultimately what it is, so it's a semi-rigid cable, uh, 304L uh, stainless steel jacket. It has copper cladding on the outside. Um, so that's your outer jacket. So you've got stainless steel, then copper cladding, um, and then you have the silicon dioxide uh, dielectric, which is kind of the secret sauce of the cable, essentially. Okay. <laughs> um, and then you have your single center conductor, so another copper center conductor uh, through the cable itself. So like I said, it's very specific for sh extreme environments. Um, so that makeup, the material allows us to go to cryogenic temperatures, high temperatures, high radiation. Um, it's also a very phase stable product as well. So. And it's sealed, right? Correct. So okay. um, it's a fully hermetically sealed assembly. So the SiO2 is a desiccant. So it likes to absorb moisture. Um, the little silicon packets you get in your shoe boxes. Yeah. So that's very similar to what this is. So if you okay. were to crush that up and have it in powdered form um, with, again, the, the added ingredients that make it kind of the secret sauce, um, <laughs> that's what's in the cable. So it likes to okay. absorb moisture. Um, and when it does, you end up with electrical degradation. So you try and prevent that from happening hmm. by fully uh, sealing the cable. So a couple specialty aspects of it, um, we do laser weld connectors on from a termination standpoint, and then we have a glass to, hermetic, glass to metal hermetic seal on the interface. So that completely seals off the interface, and then the laser weld between the connector and the cable jacket are what seal off the assembly itself. So oh, fascinating. Yeah. You keep saying the special sauce. I, I just want to note that um, we call it that instead of giving you all the details because we're only <laughs> yeah. there's only two main manufacturers and we're one of them and we're the primary um, in the world. Yeah. <laughs> and, <I guess. laughs> and as you heard, these um, these assemblies go into some very harsh environments yes. like space mm -hmm. um, is is a key one, for Correct. instance, and um, and also used a lot with our government. Correct. Yep. There's a lot of military based applications. Um, some of the ones and this is public knowledge that something uh, hypersonic missiles have been a really big push lately um, and that's something we're heavily involved in. So that as well as there's some other really cool applications um, in the physics world. So okay. for those nerds out there that really like um, particle accelerators like me, um, these actually go in those. So uh, they're utilized for their face stability and then also the cryo, cryo temperatures that they're going to see. So we we'll have to have a whole episode yeah. just on applications. Yeah. <laughs> so I believe you have some samples. Yes, so can yes. you show us an example of um, an SAO2 assembly? Yeah, so this is it. So as I said, it's a, a semi-rigid component here. Um, this is the laser weld. It's going to be really hard to see from afar, but this is where that laser weld happens. And then the glass to metal interface is actually at the front here. So this is one of the components that has that in there. So um, like I said, this is very special to SiO2. Um, and then this you can see from the outside here is the 304L jacket. Um, and then uh, what you can't see is inside. But ultimately, this is it. This is a fairly uh, basic configuration here. Um, so we do get pretty crazy with these. Yeah, they can um, go very long. Yes, very long. So we have some assemblies that are up to like 13 feet long. Wow. Um, some of them have multiple cable diameters. So this is one of our largest cable diameters. Um, this is 270 diameter. Um, we have a, a wide offering, uh, about five cable diameter sizes right now, but you can actually integrate in multiple diameters together depending on needs. Um, and then we've even had some assemblies with loops in them as well, which uh, are quite challenging to make. So uh, <laughs> they're a lot of fun. Um, cables sometimes are the last thing designed. So that's why we get all the interesting configurations. So, oh, so they're actually designing the cable connection after the rest of yes. their... Uh, 
design is done. So what's the main difference between SiO2 and semi-rigid and why would you choose one over the other? So semi-rigid, um, so similar construction. Um, obviously, it's going to look similar to this except for you have different materials. Okay. So really, it's the temperature threshold. Um, we have two different product lines for semi-rigid. One is our face track uh, mm -hmm. product line. So very face stable, just like SiO2. Um, and by face stable, what I mean is at room temperature, typically with Teflon, you have the Teflon knee. So you're not tracking your phase um, in a linear manner. Um, whereas with phase track and SiO2, it's much easier to integrate into a system because you don't have that drastic inverse change at room temperature. So our phase track assemblies use a TF4 dielectric and then our regular semi-rigid uses a uh, Teflon dielectric. So that's really what determines that temperature threshold. Okay. Um, after you get to a certain temperature, your jacket and your dielectric are going to end up melting. They won't end up end up withstanding the temperatures that they're going to be put into. So that's when you would transition over to SiO2. So. And most of these are installed and stay installed. So there's no maintenance where these are going. Yes. Right? Yes. Which is one <laughs> of the other. <laughs> exactly. So um, from a design level, we really have to pay attention to longevity of the product, um, what it's going to look like after it's been exposed for long durations. Um, and then sometimes those extreme exposures end up happening at the end of life. Um, mm -hmm. So you also have to design and be aware of what it's going to see up to that point as well. So it can get quite challenging. But. And all of this is done at our Mesa facility in Arizona, correct? Correct. That's our center of excellence for SIO2. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us. We'll have to have another episode about applications. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I know. There's a long laundry list of those. Right. So. We'll do that next. Again, thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, please reach out to us at realtimes at timesmicro.com. That's R-E-E-L. And until next time, thank you for watching and stay safe.